Well, it's the middle of the week and I don't have a real job, so it's time for another Weird OS Wednesday. And today we're installing the community maintained 32-bit version of Arch Linux on a goober. This might be painful, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy command line based pain and suffering, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this weird little thing is a Panasonic Toughbook CFU1. Thanks to my friend Mike of Mike's Mess for gifting this to me at the System Source swap meet. Well, more like chucking it at me. This thing was built for industrial use and despite being super rugged, it's slow as dirt, even by 2008 standards. It sports a single core ultra low power Intel Atom Z520 at 1.33 gigahertz. Dual batteries give this up to nine hours of runtime, perfect for a shift in the old warehouse. It has a few interesting quirks and several features, including one non-bootable CF card slot, a single USB port that is bootable, barcode scanner at the top here. Unfortunately, the hard drive and proprietary connector are long gone, along with the original install of Windows Vista Basic. No, my Vista! So we're gonna have to do something about that before we install Arch. Now the smart thing to do would be to plug in a USB mouse and keyboard for this install, but we're doing this install on the janky built-in keyboard. All right, before we get too deep into this, let's just make sure it's actually gonna boot from the Arch image here. Hold down power. Oh yeah, it's booting Arch. And the keyboard does work. Yeah, so let's crack this thing open and see if we can't get a hard drive in here. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content and you have the means, I do have a Patreon linked down in the description. The generous support of patrons and channel members ensures I can continue to fill my house with unusual and questionable e-waste. So this is the IDE cable here, which is 40 pin IDE on a flat flex cable. And all we have to do is peel off this little bit of tape in here. We can just kind of push this original cable up and out of the way and not have to completely disassemble this thing to remove it. And we can just install the other cable over top of it. And here is the MSATA to 40 pin adapter for an iPod. And this can fit right here where normally the 3G card would go in these. I guess mine here was not optioned with that, which is good because you can't do anything with 3G cellular anymore anyway. All right, I've got an MSATA SSD here that for some reason I wrote Kanga on. Hmm, suspicious. There we go. Oh yeah, there it is, Dogfish SSD, 120 gigabytes. It is working. I'm gonna secure this drive in place in the most professional manner that I know how. Like a glove. All right, I've got the goober back together and I've only misplaced several of the screws as is tradition. Oh yeah, installing Arch Linux. All right, I've got the Arch install guide up on my trusty OpenSUSE X60S. Let's see how painful this is gonna be on a tiny tic-tac keyboard. All right, let's see if we can't get a more reasonable font on here. Man, this keyboard is weird. You've got half the letters here, the other half on this side, arrow keys in the middle, number keys in the middle, space bar is this little nugget over here. Now yeah, apparently there is Wi-Fi in, in this thing. So let me connect this to my home Wi-Fi. My God, this is hard to type on. Yeah, check it out, pinggoogle.com. We are on Wi-Fi. All right, let's see if LSBLK sees the hard drive. It does, and boy, are there a lot of weird partitions on there. I guess that was a classic Mac disc after all. 
So let's do F disk slash dev slash SDA. All right, good old two partition layout, swap partition four gigs and SDA two main partition bootable with just the rest of the drive saying 107.8 gigs formatting the main partition. All right, let's pack strap this. I'll check it out. We are installing the basis of Arch Linux. And you know, this is actually kind of really cool typing on this. I mean, it's weird to get used to, but this just feels like such a hacker device typing Linux commands. And uh, yeah, now that we've made the font bigger, it's much easier to read. But how freaking cool is this thing? This is like a hacker device from the movies or something. I love this. I'll check it out. Pack strap successful. Just got to make an F stab here and CH root into our new install. And we'll give this a totally serious and not at all hilarious host name. Okay, so of course this wasn't going to be super easy. I ran into an issue and it's kind of a showstopper. If I try to install any software, so Pacman dash S nano. Well, it finds it in the repository, but fails on signature issues. And that means I can't even install like grub to get a bootloader on here. So what I'm going to try is something that's on the arch 32 forum. I'm just going to turn off signature verification. Okay. Well, after a little bit of fiddling, I got Pacman and package installation working and by fiddling, I mean completely disabling security. So it's not checking for signatures anymore. Not very safe, not very secure, but Hey, it's working. And I do believe we've installed everything. I've also installed XFCE and light DM so we can log into a graphical environment. And I think if we reboot now, this will boot into arch Linux. Oh yeah, look at this. We are in light DM <laughs> in a graphical environment on the goober. Uh, let's see, will the stylus work as a mouse? I have no idea. Oh, it does. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> I am legitimately very excited. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's log in here. Come on, XFCE. Oh yeah, look at that. According to Power Manager, there's an hour and three minutes left on these two batteries. But look at this. We are in freaking XFCE with mouse control, although it doesn't work quite right. Actually, I can't, <laughs> I can't get to the top of the screen. Crap. Um, all right, we're going to plug in the hamster mouse for now just so we can get stuff done. Let's see here. There's pretty much no applications installed except for the default XFCE stuff. Oh my goodness. This is honestly incredible. This is like the perfect little hacker device. Oh yeah, we've got NetSurf web browser. I wonder how responsive it will be. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Look at that. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I wish the touch screen was a little more calibrated. Maybe we can fix that. Yeah, check it out. This is pretty sweet. All right, I changed window scaling to 2x and I have the terminal in full screen mode. And I got to say, this feels very freaking cool. I mean, look at it. I don't know why the uh, calibration of the touchscreen is so off. And yeah, none of these other buttons, I don't think, will do anything now. And the barcode scanner doesn't seem to do anything under Linux either. But we are connected via Wi-Fi. So we are a fully wireless little Linux device here. Oh, check it out. I installed my favorite open source game, Sour Broughton Cube 2. <laughs> I wonder if this will be anywhere close to playable on this thing. Ooh, 
<laughs> quite a bit of lag even on this screen here. You know, this is not looking good. Oh yeah, look at that. We loaded into the game. Ooh, it is not at all playable. <laughs> but it's trying. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Ooh, you cannot do it, can you? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, not exactly playable. So that is Arch Linux 32 on a tiny goober of a computer. Honestly, not the most painful thing to install other than the signature issues, which of course renders this very insecure. According to the forums, that's been an issue for a little while, so maybe if one of you can contribute to development like that, you could go in and fix it. I mean, it is open source. In any event, I'm curious to try some other weird operating systems on this thing, like I wonder if this could run React OS for some weird DOS gaming. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut King Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.